Hello and welcome to Journey with Bungie and this week uh, we're doing a countdown to Christmas as we are in the season of Advent and so I want to just throw a question to you how are you preparing for Christmas and we know various ways in which people prepare, prepare for Christmas. They go shopping. They want to spend time with family, you know, and just have good food to eat, offer each other gifts and things like that. As much as all of these things are important, we need to reflect a bit more about why we even celebrate Christmas in the first place and think about how we're really preparing for this coming of Jesus Christ. Of course, we're celebrating his birthday. But what is more important is that we think about the second coming of Christ. And so we should be preparing ourselves to meeting Christ at his second coming. And because we don't know when that will be, in a way we are just being invited to reflect on our last day. If today were our last day, how would we live it? How would we want to depart this world? In a way, that is also preparing for the coming of Christ. And so I'm going to just invite you to, to look back and throw away any aspects in your life that are not good. Anything that you know that you do, knowingly or unknowingly, that is not good. Let's purge it. Let's kill it. Let's do our best and try to say okay a way of preparing for christ's coming is to do his will is to be good is to be better is to try to improve ourselves every single day having said that i have a question for each of us do we spend a lot of time complaining about things that haven't worked well in our lives do we spend a lot of time mourning about our disappointments and what's gone wrong? Do we spend a lot of time in despair, thinking that the world is against us because of certain misfortunes that may have come our way? And I'm going to go into a few specific examples. Are you jobless or have you just been sacked from a job and you're just wondering why are you? Or are you homeless? Have you been thrown out of a house maybe because you didn't pay your rent or maybe because you weren't complying with um, the expectations of the household where you're living? Could it be that you've fallen out with family and friends and things are just not working? Could it be you are actually in a relationship or in a marriage and you can't seem to agree what to do with regards to Christmas, whether you want to invite family over or you want to go spend it with family. And you and your spouse seem to be arguing over how to spend this Christmas. Or are you in a situation where you're worried because you will not even be spending it with your spouse? Maybe he or she is going away. And you're living in doubt and you're not happy about it. You wanted to spend it with them and they're not there. Have you been rejected by family, by spouse, by your children? Many other examples I could give. Maybe attacked. Let's, let's take it a, a step further as in physical attack by someone. Have you been physically attacked and maybe wounded, gunshot, knife, just something more serious we are called today to reflect and say life is not easy you actually could be listening to me now when you're grieving you may have lost someone who is so close to you and you're just in despair just angry with life with the situation with the reality of what is going on and maybe not happy with god but i just want to invite you to think about this coming of Christ, whether we are celebrating Christ's birthday at Christmas or reflecting on his second coming, that we remember to be thankful at any time and every time. Thankful that you're alive now. Thank you that, thank, thankful that you've got breath in your lungs. Thankful that you're in good health. Thankful that you've got 
someone who can speak to you. Thankful that you have maybe the mobile phone that you're watching this on. Thankful that you have people that you can turn to sometimes for advice even when things are so bad. Can you be thankful? Can we learn to be more thankful? In fact, I was listening to a priest this morning and I took a few notes of some things that he said. Um, he was asking parents to pray for their kids and grandchildren. He was asking us to meditate on how Jesus interjects in our lives. He was teaching us to laugh through the hard times because it can be medicinal. And he said, learn to laugh at your own silliness because perfection only exists in heaven. Bring good out of the bad times. Do not look at your past as a loss. And he ended by saying, Lord, Lord, teach us through our suffering and lure us to laugh through our shortcomings. And this came because today's gospel was on the genealogy of Christ. And I want to just invite us to think about it. He was talking about family, knowing about your history, where you come from. And be thankful and appreciative of your past, whether good or bad. Of your ancestors, whether they were good or bad. Just be thankful. And I want to invite anyone who was maybe adopted or who comes from adopt an adopted family and doesn't know their father, for example. I want to invite you to still be thankful. If we look at Jesus, Joseph was his foster father. Just look at the life he had and how he was raised by Joseph. His ancestral line is Joseph's. So if you were adopted and you're being loved and you love your adopted family, their genealogy is your genealogy. I just wanted to share this because it's so important that children who are adopted, when we're talking about the genealogy of Christ in Matthew chapter 1, for example, that they don't feel left out and think, oh, I was orphaned. For example, maybe they were orphaned when they were adopted and they're just thinking, I don't belong. You do belong. You do belong and you claim that, ancest that family's ancestral history as yours. It is part of your family. And so I want to invite us eight days to Christmas that we think about our own selves, our inner man, who dwells in us. Who are we? Who do we allow to direct our words, our thoughts, our actions every day? So if you can close your eyes and let's just spend a moment in the presence of the Lord before I close us out. I'm going to sing a song and if you know it, sing along. To love only you, O oh Lord. To love only you, O oh Lord. To love only you, O oh Lord. And never to look back. To love only you. To love only you, O oh Lord. To love only you, O oh Lord. And never to look back. To follow in your path, O oh Lord. To follow in unfailing love to worship at your feet O oh Lord and never to look back to follow in your path O oh Lord to follow with unfailing your feet O oh Lord and never to look back 
to love only you, O oh Lord, to love only you, O oh Lord, to love only you, O oh Lord, and never to look back. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the miracle of waking today. We thank you for the breath in our lungs, for our lives, for your love and your mercy. We thank you that we are alive and in good health, able to watch and to listen and to participate in anything that has to do with you, O oh Lord. We thank you for all those who are present here today, who are watching this right now, O oh Lord. And we ask you to bless each one of us. Bless us abundantly as we prepare for your coming in eight days to celebrate your birthday because you are our Messiah, O oh Lord, King of glory. Bless anyone who is watching now. Pour your special anointing upon them, O oh Lord. Meet them at their point of need and grant them pardon and mercy for their sins, for their shortcomings, for the many times they have been ungrateful, for the many times they have not thanked you for the life that they live. Father, I ask you to bless them. Have mercy on them, strengthen them, bless their going and their coming, be around them, fill them with your Holy Spirit, O Lord. And that as we have gathered this evening online, morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you may be, brothers and sisters, I pray that you look deep in your heart, that the Lord will help us to purge any aspects of us that are impure. Any things that we are thinking, planning to do, or any of our actions that are not in alignment with the will of God. I pray that we use this opportunity to reflect on them. Change our ways. There's all, every day and every moment is always an opportunity for a new beginning and to start afresh. So I ask Lord God, Jesus Christ, that he washes us clean by the blood of the Lamb. And we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Usually at the end of Mass, the priest always says, go forth uh, and glorify the Lord by your life. And we say thanks be to God. So as we depart, may your life be a testimony that you are a child of God or a Christian. Please do not be a Christian just by words, but by your actions. God bless you and thank you for watching. Remain ever thankful, be happy, keep smiling. And if you haven't already done that, do click the subscribe button behind my YouTube link, please. And come back tomorrow. We're going to do an eight days journey to Christmas. God bless you. Bye.